Welcome back to Three Months of Modal Logics, a sequel to 100 Days of Logic, here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series on temporal logic, looking at the beginning and end of time. So, we've expressed a lot of properties about our timeline so far, but we haven't expressed specific properties that will say whether or not our timeline has a beginning or an end. We may also want to say that time does have a beginning or does have an end, or that there is no beginning to time or no end to our timeline. Or in other words, there exists no instant that has no predecessor or no instant that has no successor. Here's how we're going to do this. So if we want to say there's no beginning to time or NBPT, we're going to say for all x there exists some y such that y is before x. Basically, for any instant, there's going to be some instant that comes before that instant. And no ending in EPT. For all instants x, there exists some instant y such that y is after x. There's not a single instant that doesn't have some instant after it. So, there's no beginning to time and no ending to time. It's important to note that these two axioms are implied by the predecessorship and the successorship relations, respectively. So if we have predecessorship, we don't need no beginning, and if we have successorship, we don't need no ending. Why would we use these axioms then? Well, if we had a dense timeline, we can't express no beginning or no ending with predecessorship or successorship. So we would need to use these axioms if we wanted to say that our dense timeline had no beginning or no ending. Conversely, we might want to say that time does have a beginning, that there's some moment that does not have a predecessor, or that time does have an ending, that there's some moment that does not have a successor. We would do this simply by negating our previous statements. That seems to make sense. Time having no beginning should be the negation of time having a beginning. So if time has a beginning, BEPT will say it's not the case that for all x there exists some y such that y comes before x. And time having an ending, ENPT, it's not the case that for all x there exists some y such that x comes before y. Now, it's important to note that unlike the no beginning and no endings relationship to predecessorship and successorship, if you have a timeline that is forward discrete, that has forward discreteness as a property, it doesn't necessarily imply that that timeline has an ending. And the same for backward discreteness and beginning. So you would need to include these properties because forward discreteness and backward discreteness, in fact, are going to be implied by predecessorship and successorship. You will need to include beginning and ending with a forward discrete or backward discrete set. And also with a dense timeline to state that a timeline has a beginning or an ending. All right, because all of that was a little confusing, we're going to look at a little table to kind of explain everything. So we have a couple different possibilities for our timeline. Our timeline can have no ending and no beginning, an ending but no beginning, no ending and a beginning, or an ending and a beginning. Also, our timeline could be not dense, or it could be dense. First, let's look at a timeline that has no ending, no beginning, and is not dense. A kind of corollary would be the integers. Zero, all positive and negative non-decimals. And this set would have predecessorship and successorship. We wouldn't need to put in no ending and no beginning, because those are implied by predecessorship and successorship. You could get by with just those two properties being held for this relation. Now. If our timeline is not dense, it has an ending but no beginning, we could take this as negative integers, all negative non-decimals, basically. This would have predecessorship, because it has no beginning, and every negative integer has an immediate predecessor, but it would have forward discreteness, because it does have an ending, but all of our negative integers have an immediate successor, if they have a successor at all. And it also has an ending, namely negative 1, because there's not going to be anything that comes after that. All right? No ending and beginning. Whole numbers, all positive, non-decimals would be a good example of this. It's going to have successorship, 
because all numbers are going to have a successor, and backward discreteness, because all numbers that have a predecessor are going to have an immediate predecessor, and with successorship, all numbers that have a successor have an immediate successor, is what I mean to say, and it's going to have a beginning, okay? Now, if we had a set of instants or a set of numbers such as the whole numbers 1 through 9, this would have backward discreteness, forward discreteness, a beginning, and an ending, because every number that has a successor has an immediate successor, every number that has a predecessor has an immediate predecessor, but there is a beginning, there's a last number, there is an ending, or rather there's a beginning, there's a first number, there is an ending, there's a last number, okay? Hopefully these make sense. So if you had a timeline of instants that looked like any of these things, it's going to fit into one of these four categories. But there are four other categories we can have if we say our timeline is dense. So if we say our timeline is dense, it has no ending and no beginning. This would be comparable to all rational numbers, any number basically that can be expressed as a fraction. It would have density, no ending, and no beginning. If we had a set of instants that's dense but has an ending and no beginning. This could be negative rational numbers, basically any negative number that could be expressed as a fraction. It's going to be dense. It has an ending because it doesn't go up past zero, but it has no beginning. Note that dense strings can have endings. The negative rational numbers will get infinitely close to zero but never touch it. But that doesn't mean it's not dense. It will also have no beginning, of course, because the negative rational numbers are going to go on forever backwards. If your timeline looks like this, you would say it's dense and it has an ending but no beginning. The positive rational numbers, any positive number that can be expressed as a fraction, are going to fit into the category of dense, but also no ending and a beginning. So they're going to be, have the property of density, have, have the property of no ending, and also the property of beginning. And finally, the rational numbers 0 through 1 are going to be dense, have an ending, and a beginning. Basically, the point of all this is to explain to you which axioms you need to take for your timeline to look like which set of numbers. The extra things we have in the parentheses beyond are going to be things that are implied by the axioms that are already in place, but you don't need to take as specific axioms. Hopefully that makes sense. Spend some time staring at this table if you're confused or just watch the video again. All right, up next we're going to learn about yet another new property of relations known as well ordering. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.